I told you this part is the forearm okay and this part is the arm and this is a specimen taken from the dissection hall and you can see this is the fossa we are talking about this triangular space exactly over here on the medial aspect of the elbow joint okay and this is the medial epicondyle which is more prominent and that's why it is called the medial epicondyle also because medial epicondyle is more prominent than the lateral epicondyle. Medial epicondyle you are having the pronate arteries because that is the common flexor origin. So medial epicondyle is the common flexor origin and it gives origin to the pronate arteries and pronate arteries has actually two heads I told you and the median nerve will be passing through this and then on the lateral side you have this muscle so exactly what we are talking about is this muscle which is the brachialis so if you see this is the brachialis sorry brachio brachio radialis okay radialis so this is the muscle which is here the brachio radialis and you have this muscle over here which is the pronator teres okay so these are the muscles which are actually forming the boundaries of the two sides of the triangle and if I draw the base of the triangle you are having a base like this. So that becomes the base of the triangle okay. So this is the triangular probed area the probe, probe is kept over here. The question can be identify identify the probed space okay and space and give its boundaries so we can ask you give its boundaries okay and along with that you can give the contents so boundaries and contents okay so this is the exact specimen which we can ask you for the spot identification in the cadaver so this is very important so probe space give its boundaries give its contents most commonly we ask the boundaries and contents or we can ask you only one boundary like give its base muscles which forms the base the floor or give the contents of the roof of the cubital fossa then you have to talk about the bicipital aponeurosis and the median cubital vein don't forget these are the two along with cutaneous nerves but definitely these are the two important contents of the roof so to repeat we are talking about the spot identification of the probed space over here which is the cubital fossa and this cubital fossa has boundaries so the boundaries are you have a roof you have a floor definitely if there is a roof there has to be a floor along with that it is a triangular space so as you can see this is the triangular space or a fossa it has two three sides so the base of the triangle is an imaginary line joining the two epicondyles of the humerus the medial side the base is formed by the lateral border of the pronate arteries the lateral side the base is formed by the medial border of the brachioradialis muscle where it joins if you come to the roof definitely skin superficial fascia but the median cubital vein which connects the basilic vein with the cephalic vein is present along with that you are also having the cutaneous nerves which are present in the skin and if you look at the base that is the floor then upper part of the floor is formed by the lowermost part of the brachialis and also the lower part of the floor is formed by a deep muscle of the extensor compartment that is the supinator. So this is about the boundaries of the cubital fossa. It can come as your short note, it can come as your MCQ question. It is a very common spot identifier question for the specimen. Coming to the contents of cubital fossa, uh, we already enumerated and you can see over here MBBR is the uh, MBBR is the mnemonic. So coming from the medial to lateral side you have the median nerve, you have the brachial artery, 
you have the biceps tendon so there are two b's so biceps tendon and the radial nerve at a deeper plane now radial nerve is the nerve which is supplying the posterior compartment of arm and it is in the posterior compartment of arm and it enters into the anterior compartment it just peeps here and it divides into a deep branch and a superficial branch okay fine so these are the contents of the cubital fossa so this showing you the contents of the cubital fossa okay coming to the next cadaveric specimen spot identification specimen is this so you can see over here something is tied over here and there are muscles over here and there is also a huge muscle over here so within these all these thick muscles you can see a nerve because this is exactly the nerve so this is again a specimen of the posterior compartment of arm you can see all these three muscles which are nothing but the triceps muscle the three heads of triceps are seen and which is ending and exactly here you are seeing the radial nerve is entering into the anterior compartment or in the cubital fossa it will be entering over here and this is actually seen in the posterior compartment now here laterally we can see the deltoid a little bit and these are all the triceps muscles so when we separated the triceps muscle we can see the course of the radial nerve especially in the posterior compartment of arm and especially it is lying on the spiral groove that is where the uh, radial nerve is in contact with the posterior surface of the humerus and there it can get actually compressed especially so this identification you have to identify the radial nerve we can ask you tag questions like explain the root value of the radial nerve so you have to tell the root value so what can the question be you can be asked to identify number one you have to identify that is the radial nerve okay the specimen the tied specimen so tied specimen okay then you can or structure not the specimen we will ask you the structure and next is what we will ask you ask you that what is the root value so those cases you can actually think that it is a nerve because definitely the nerve only has a root value so this radial nerve has a root value from c5 to t1 because it is getting contribution from all the trunks of the brachial plexus so it is very easy we can also ask you about the any two branches so we can tell you name any two branches in the arm or name any two branches it is giving in the forearm okay so radial nerve is a nerve of the extensor compartment of arm and forearm so it is mainly supplying all the extensors now the extension of the elbow joint is brought about by the triceps so you can see over here these are all the heads of the triceps so radial nerve definitely will supply ev each and every head of the triceps and it is related to the spiral groove i'm telling you where of the humerus where it is in direct contact with the bone okay so above the spiral group so before entering into the spiral group the radial nerve is a continuation of which cord of brachial plexus it is the continuation of posterior cord of brachial plexus so it is posterior to the the axillary artery in the third part of axillary artery especially and then it comes through the lower triangular space and it enters into the posterior compartment and it is in close association or lying very close to the humerus the spiral groove of the humerus in its posterior surface now before entering into the spiral groove in the axilla itself the radial nerve will give a branch to the long head of triceps and also the lateral head of triceps and it will also give the cutaneous branch so after giving all these branches it will enter into the spiral group where again it will supply the lateral head and the medial head of triceps and also it will give a branch to the unconious muscle so these are some of the branches which are coming in the arm so after that it will be coming turning and comes in relation to or one of the content of the cubital fossa it is the lateral most content of the cubital fossa 
and it is it actually appears in front of the arm and then it divides into a superficial branch and a deep branch it starts supplying even before coming into the cubital fossa it supplies the brachioradialis muscle and gives some proprioceptive fibers to the brachialis muscle